This is Super Mario World for the Super Nintendo. Super Mario World was a pack-in game for the original SNES, so typically during the launch days, it was the first game players experienced on the new system. And it was a fantastic way to kick off players into Nintendo's 16-bit era. It was a direct sequel to Super Mario Bros. 3 on the NES and went bigger with better graphics and also introduced the world to one of Nintendo's most famous characters, Yoshi. With the improved power of the SNES, legendary game designer Shigeru Miyamoto was finally able to include the green dinosaur that he had hoped to add into the NES, but was unable to do so due to hardware limitations. It's easily in my top list of games of all time, and it's one of the best platformers ever created, and it's today's subject on SideQuest. When I was a teenager, I wasn't really sure what bits were, but I sure knew the Super Nintendo Entertainment System had a lot of them, twice as many in fact as its predecessor, the non-Super, just regular Nintendo. And just as he introduced us to the old Nintendo console, there was only one man and his brother who could properly lead us into this beautiful new 16-bit world. After some time oogling the sleek new design of the small gray console with purple sliding buttons, it was time to pop in the included copy of Super Mario World and find out just what was so super about it. With the launch of a brand new console, Nintendo wanted to communicate to its fan base that this new console was everything they loved about the NES just much better. The inclusion of Super Mario World with the purchase of an SNES worked brilliantly in that respect, specifically because it provided the familiarity of something we already knew and loved while also showcasing just how much further we were about to go. Super Mario World doesn't mess too much with story, but it's got a little and it's simple and the bulk of it is found in the manual. After the events of Super Mario Bros. 3, Mario, Luigi, and Peach all go to relax on the beach of a magical land called Dinosaur Island. After waking from arrest, Mario and Luigi find Princess Peach missing. Instead of finding Peach, they find an egg, and when it hatches, out pops Yoshi, who tells them how his pals were trapped by Bowser's minions in similar eggs. Expecting to find Peach along with the Yoshis, Mario sets out to defeat the Kooplings and Bowser on his adventure. One of my favorite things about Super Mario World was a relatively small learning curve needed to figure out the gameplay. While it must have been tempting to show off what the more powerful new console could do with an all new Mario game, legendary developer Shigeru Miyamoto opted instead to use the new resources to finally include some of the elements he had always envisioned for previous Mario games, including past failed attempts to give Mario a dinosaur friend, Yoshi. This is the first game Yoshi would appear in, and he would later become one of the most important characters in the Nintendo world, appearing in his own games as well as character collab games such as the Nintendo Sports games, the Mario Kart series, and Smash Brothers. The first thought many people have upon initial gameplay is this feels a lot like Super Mario Bros. 3, and that was certainly by design. Instead of forcing players to figure out a whole new game mechanic, developers instead scaffolded new game concepts onto ones which had already been well established in Mario lore. This allowed the vast new game world to open up organically for players salivating for more. I already understand running and jumping in the Mario universe, but now if I use the other button to jump, he'll spin to break blocks. Cool. Eventually this becomes, okay, so now I understand how to move around and hunt avoid bad guys, how does that apply to riding a dinosaur? Eventually it just makes sense to the player that if Mario's dinosaur eats certain Koopas, he breathes fire. And oh yeah, he can also fly if you find a blue Yoshi. Not only did Nintendo keep it familiar, they also added in tons of new features to build upon an already awesome formula. Newly added features like the ability to store an item and have it drop when needed, and the inclusion of new items like that feather that allows Mario to fly, were welcome additions that enhanced Super Mario World. Also, the overworld map was back, but this time the game focused on finding secret exits that would allow players to enter secret areas of the map. The red dots on the map indicated which levels had secret exits, and also the start screen displayed how many levels you found. This added an extra incentive for exploration to find all the secrets and all the hidden levels. 
And this brings me to one of my favorite innovations. The developers of Super Mario World did take advantage of the SNES controller and all its glorious buttons. As with the increased processing power of the new console, the updated controller with nearly twice as many gaming buttons had potential to be hugely overwhelming, but again, the developers integrated the new features perfectly. Mario has always been a simple D-pad and two buttons kind of guy. He doesn't need much. Let him move left and right and duck as needed and run and jump and shoot the occasional fireball and he's all set. For the most part, he still does the same thing in Super Mario World and you could play with just these three buttons and not miss a beat. This allowed it to be immediately fun because you can zip around this vibrant new world feeling like you know what you are doing from the moment you turn the game on. As you feel more comfortable, you learn things like how to spin jump, how to fly indefinitely, and how insanely helpful it is to pan the screen left and right, especially on scrolling levels. Coming from Super Mario Bros. 3 on the NES, a classic in its own right, you're immediately aware of just how much more this game is of what you have always loved about Super Mario Bros. What begins as a very familiar Mario experience eventually sprawls into a gigantic world filled with new characters, new twists on old characters, minigames, helpful enemy eating and weaponizing, dinosaurs, secret nearly impossible worlds, and over 90 levels of superb Mario content. The graphics and music are excellent in relation to previous Mario games and are certainly a new console worthy. The bottom line is the game certainly stands the test of time and is insanely replayable. Whether you have a hankering for a speed run or just feel like saddling up Yoshi and going for a leisurely coin collecting stroll, Super Mario World will scratch that itch perfectly. Hey, I had a ton of fun making this video, mostly because it gave me a reason to go back and replay this fantastic game. It's crazy to think that in a library of Super Nintendo games with over 700 titles produced across eight years, that a game that came out at launch still dominates the top of the list. Super Mario World is amazing, and I realize most people have played it tons and that there's no shortage of YouTube content for the game. However, it's still super fun to talk about it and discuss with you. So please comment on the video and tell me all your experiences with Super Mario World and I most definitely will respond back. And I'll catch you next time in my next video.